Hey, up! Right, it's that time of the year now where we're all uh, dragging our bikes out of the garage and uh, assessing the damage that winter's caused. I've only ridden the mule, that's the classic 500, two or three times during winter and only uh, on the brighter, finer, drier days. And I think the last time it was thoroughly cleaned was about July, August last year, that's 2023. And I did use her a fair bit uh, towards the end of uh, last summer going into autumn. As I've explained before, I do have a bit of a problem with um, condensation in the garage during the winter months. I don't mind it, to be honest, because it does give me sort of some realistic uh, idea of how coatings etc are reacting on a bike but by this time of the year you know it is pretty dusty and grimy and the chrome's always covered in watermarks through uh, drips from condensation so like all my bikes the mule's ready for a bit of a spring clean by now right let's just get this bit out of the way this is not a paid promotion on behalf of auto bright direct um auto bright are just friends that send me stuff to test if i like it um, I make a video reviewing it. If I don't like it, I don't. Uh, and if I don't get a chance to test it again, I don't make a video on it because I've not had a chance to test it. But they don't pay me in any way, shape or form for making these videos. I get nothing from it. Now, I think it's very sensible to have a sceptical view of a lot of the ceramic products that are bantered around the market uh, you know we see videos on facebook videos on here on youtube showing how miraculous they are and to be quite honest i always take them with a pinch of salt as you know i was involved in the paint game back in the 90s and the early 2000s ceramics sort of appeared on the market then uh, I was constantly inundated with salesmen knocking on my unit door trying to sell me one ceramic product after another. I tried them out, I didn't really rate them. They were no better than a traditional wax in essence, yet there were three or four times the um, cost of a traditional wax and they required a lot more effort to put on and the longevity wasn't much better. And as you know, if you've followed this channel for any length of time, I pretty much ignored ceramic uh, coatings up until the last couple of years because I, I just you know, didn't see the point in misleading people by telling them that they were miraculous. That's not what I do. That's not how I run this channel. If I lead people up the garden path, um, you know, I get a lot of hassle and people stop watching my videos and I have enough t trouble with trolls as it is without sort of encouraging them by purposely misleading people. Now Auto Break Direct is one of those um, organisations that as far as I'm concerned sort of appeared from nowhere about four or five years ago. I know they've been going longer than that. But up until then, I'd relied on the brands that I knew and trusted uh, to sort of keep myself out of trouble. And I was very sceptical of Autobrite when I first started dealing with them. In fact, I think I turned them down a couple of times when they first approached me uh, to let me try some of the products out. Anyway, that's water under the bridge. I do deal with Autobrite Direct now. Um, I've never found a bad products from their range. There are some that are on par with other market leaders and there are some that really stand head and shoulders above everyone else. And what I'm going to show you today is one of them because to be quite honest, when I'd finished treating this bike, it left me feeling quite speechless, which as you know is unusual for me. Right, so the snow foam product that you've just been watching me apply to the bike, um, it is actually an auto bright snow foam. I know it's in a muck off bottle, but I have lots of old bottles that I use uh, for dispensing these sort of chemicals. It just happens to be a muck off one. And just to make it clear, this jet washer is a motorcycle safe jet washer designed to uh, be able to clean a motorcycle without getting water in any places where it shouldn't be. 
I don't use Snow Farm on my motorcycles as a matter of course, but the meal was particularly grotty after a winter in the garage. Uh, a lot of gritty sort of dust residue on it, which, um, you know, if you start going over it with a wash mitt or anything like that, you're liable to cause scratching. This bike is coming up to five years old now, and um, she's looking very good for her age, but there is a little bit of micro scratching on the chrome, which you can catch in certain lights. And on this occasion, I didn't want to make that any worse with that gritty dust, so... I decided this was the best way to go about it, a hands-off approach. Any wax that was on the paintwork and the chrome on this bike is well gone. I think it was last spring when I last waxed this bike. Between now and then it's had the occasional spritz with a fast detailer which doesn't last very long. So the paintwork is wax free pretty much at this point. Now, I'm saying that because uh, whenever you're applying any form of new protectant, whether it's ceramic or not, you should make sure that the surfaces are clean and wax-free. Otherwise, you're applying the product to the wax so it won't stick and you're wasting your time. So, for best results, clean your bike thoroughly and then if you've got some panel wipe the fast acting panel wipe which is naphtha based use that to wipe over all the panels that you're going to treat uh, prior to treating it that way you're making sure that you have the cleanest surface you could possibly have prior to applying any new product now to try and maintain that sort of hands-off approach uh, after i'd rinsed the bike off thoroughly and as you can see it has come up really clean and I dried it off with a bike dryer. As I say, there are some micro scratches in the chrome now. As I say, the bike is almost five years old. That's inevitable that it's going to be like that at that time, no matter how well you've looked after it. So it is worth making the effort just to reduce the incidence of fresh scratches as much as you possibly can. Now, once I got the bike as dry as I possibly could with the bike dryer, I started it up and let it run for about 10 minutes to get some heat through the engine and just evaporate as much moisture as I possibly could. Before I started applying this Auto Bright Direct hard coat ceramic coating. Now, I'll leave a link for all these products that I'm using. I'm not going to talk about price because this video is likely to be up for several years and during the course of those years, it's very likely that the pricing will change. But what I will say is this product is very reasonably priced for what it does. It's very economical in use. It's a clear liquid in a 250 milliliter glass bottle. It comes with a very high quality trigger spray. But on top of that, you're also going to need a couple of decent quality microfiber cloths or a microfiber um, applicator and a buffing cloth. They're not included in the price, you have to buy them extra. Now, before I get started um, applying this stuff, as you can see, there are quite a lot of hard watermarks that have been left on by drips during the uh, winter. It's especially bad on the chrome, and it's a sort of uh, calcareous mineral deposit left behind as the water evaporates. Obviously, you can remove these using some sort of um, mild abrasive, but then again, you're increasing the incidence of scratches. So I've started using this um, water spot removing gel from Auto Bright Direct. It is very easy to use and it's very effective. But the beauty of it is with it being a gel, it also lubricates as you're dissolving those calcium deposits. So it doesn't scratch, which is especially important on mirror finish chrome. You can't sort of apply any form of uh, coating over water spots. Well, you can, but it has the effect of sealing them in, so they're still there, it doesn't remove them. So even if it, this is just after a wash during the summer months when you decide to ceramic coat your bike, it is worth just getting rid of any uh, water spots first, because they do mar the finish especially on dark colour paints and, as I've shown here, on chrome. 
It's easy to use, uh, and when you've finished using it, just go around with a damp cloth and uh, just wipe it away to deactivate the gel. Auto Bright recommend that you rinse it off with water. Um, I, I've found just using a damp cloth to go over everything and remove it works just as well. Right, so when you've done that, give your hard coating a good shake and uh, affix the trigger spray. Now, the trigger spray is a really high quality item. It's got a very positive lock system which locks the trigger up so it can't be accidentally dispensed and then unlocks it so that you can use it easily. It's a nice touch, it's not the usual tapped uh, sort of trigger spray that you tend to get with a lot of products. You can then dispense the hard coat onto either your applicator or onto a cloth that you're going to use as an applicator. Don't spray it directly onto the paintwork. Now if you were using this on a car, I would say just treat one panel at a time. On a motorcycle, it, obviously it's a bit different because all the parts are quite a bit smaller. Although it amounts to the same thing in the greater scheme of things. Autobrite advertised that this particular product has a lifespan of one year once it's been properly applied and it's really easy to apply. I'm not sure that the camera has really picked this up but this wowed me as soon as I put it on and I'll explain why in a moment. And I'll also explain why a one year coating like this is possibly the most economic and useful type of coating to use especially on a motorcycle. Simply wipe it all over the surface to be treated. I think initially here I was using perhaps a little bit too much product, but you soon get the hang of how much you actually need. Spread it around and make sure that you've, you've worked it thoroughly into all the little nooks and crannies, folds and swages, to make sure that you're not leaving any bare spots. Now, I could tell straight away from this, it's got the smell of a petroleum distillate. They're obviously using that as a carrier, but I think they're also using it partially as a cleaner as well. So it's acting as a dual action chemical. It's removing any wax or coating residues that might have been left behind when you cleaned it, leaving a clean surface for the product to adhere to, to bond to. Now I'm surmising that this is, um, as I say, a carrier with resins and copolymer resins suspended in it, which also contain those ceramic particles. Being suspended in a petroleum distillate means it's very slick when you put it on, there's no friction and what you're doing is you're working it into all those tiny little pinholes and gaps in your paintwork and your chrome making sure that it gets right down to the base level of the sort of paintwork or substrate. And once you're happy that you've got a good even coverage you just then get a, a fresh buffing cloth and start buffing. Light circular movements are all that are required. You don't have to press hard, you don't need friction. Just buff it lightly until you've got a deep, pleasing shine. That's all that you need to do. Now, if you get any sort of smeary spots that don't seem to be buffing out, simply put some fresh product on your other cloth, on your applicator cloth, reapply it to those areas and then immediately buff off and it should remove them immediately. This is a really easy and forgiving product to use. I noticed straight away at this stage that this has some quite impressive filling properties. Most, if not all, of those micro scratches that I mentioned earlier on instantly disappeared and returned the chrome looking back to how it was when the bike was new. And it's done that without having to remove any of the surface chrome itself. You know, you're leaving your finish totally intact and you're simply filling in the gaps that cause the hazing that you know normally is a problem as a vehicle gets older. As you can see, all you're really doing is spreading this product over the surface. You, you know, you're not trying to abrade anything. You're just gently working it into the paintwork. 
And the improvement in shine and luster is instantaneous. This left me speechless while I was working with it. Because as far as the paintwork and the chrome is concerned on the mule, it brought it back to how I remembered it when the bike was new. And I never thought I would see that again. In fact, apart from using some uh, very skillful high-end machine polishing, I wouldn't really have thought that this kind of finish was possible. The only things that it won't rectify, obviously, are things like stone chips. Autobrite directs say that this uh, particular product is suitable for use on paintwork, chrome, polished stainless steel, apart from areas that might get hot. Not that that would cause any harm, but obviously the heat is just going to burn this product away. So it's safe for use on your handlebars, all your chrome, your chrome bezels on your headlamp, your paintwork, your wheel rims if they're chrome, and even all the accessible areas of your frame if that's how far you want to go. They recommend after treatment a curing time of two to four hours depending on the temperature. Now if it's particularly cold and damp as it was on the day that I was doing this, they recommend that you leave it a minimum of six hours before exposing it to moisture or rain. I think common sense dictates that when you're doing a job like this, you know, you do it perhaps after a day's ride in the late afternoon, and then when you've finished, you put it away until the next day. I can't think of any reason why you couldn't put successive layers of this for, uh, you know, a belt and braces approach to protection. But if you're going to do that, I would recommend leaving it at least 24 hours in between coats. And I don't really think there's any need to exceed three coats. Now, one thing that does need a little bit of care and attention are the engine casings on the mule. They've not been done for two or three years and, you know, usual sort of oxidation and, again, watermark. Are starting to mar the look of the engine a little bit. It needs a bit of attention. Uh, I'll get onto that at some stage in the future, but as usual, when I finished a cleaning job on a bike, I uh, coated the entire engine in bright's own engine protectant which is an oil based engine protectant it doesn't leave shiny surfaces smeary which is nice and it'll protect all your engine surfaces from uh, damage through oxidation dirt etc until it's ready for its next wash now of course you can get these um, ceramic coating products in all different sort of shapes and sizes so you can get temporary ones that only last a few weeks something like this that lasts for a year or you can get sort of light versions that last for three years or versions that last for five or six years and those longer lasting versions have some severe limitations for a start you need to top them up once a year with some sort of uh, top up spray because you know abrasion from your knees on your tank and stuff like that is going to wear them off in a fairly short space of time so they need to be constantly topped up especially in high wear areas the other thing is they're very expensive and last but not least the complicated and time consuming to apply what makes this particular hard coat product stand out is that anybody can apply it 
it's quick it's easy it lasts a year and you can top it up whenever you like and the thing is looking at the bottle after use i only used about a tenth of the content so if you're just putting this on once a year it's potentially going to last you 10 years now i would suggest treating it in spring and then treating it again in autumn just to make sure that you've got maximum protection at all times even then it's going to last you five years and there's no need to sort of put any additional top-up agents on in between. So you'll have proper ceramic protection for five years at what amounts to about a quarter of the cost of what your average five-year ceramic protection kit will cost you. And that's if you're able to apply it properly and do it yourself. If you're having to pay someone to do it, you can add another hundred quid onto that easily. Now, I know from experience that, have, having said that, I'll now get half a dozen professional valeters jump into the comments section telling me, oh, it's, you know, it's not as simple as just putting these products on. You've got to clean the surface. You've got to clear bar it to get rid of all the contaminants, etc. Yes, that's the gold standard. But the gold standard doesn't last very long before it starts to deteriorate again. For your average motorcyclist or car owner who just wants to make their bike or car stand out from the rest without going too overboard and spending too much money, I think this product is the perfect solution. It doesn't just protect, it instantly beautifies your paintwork and your chrome. Obviously, if you are particularly fastidious and you want to go through all those additional procedures to get that gold standard there's nothing to stop you from doing that but you don't need to do it you can get great results by just doing what you've seen me do here and although it pains me to say it, you get results that are actually better than a good quality wax and I think financially it'll probably actually work out cheaper than a decent quality wax like I said at the beginning of this video, within just a few minutes of using this treatment, I was gobsmacked. The results were not what I was expecting. They were far greater than I was expecting. It left me quite speechless. And I'm not pulling your leg or leading you up the garden path when I say that. I'll leave links to all these Autobrite products that I've used in the video description down below for you to peruse if you wish to do so. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would help this channel out by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. It's a regular thing that I'm getting comments from people that are finding that they've been unsubscribed and they've got no idea why, or the notifications have been disabled. So, when you hit the notification bell, ensure that your notifications are enabled. And it's worth checking that out every now and again for all the channels you subscribe to. Because for some strange reason, YouTube keeps messing around with these settings. Now, there are other ways that you can help this channel out if you wish to do so, either via my Patreon page or via the Super Thanks button down below. Either way would be much appreciated. Now, I'll let this video play out with some beauty shots uh, of the chrome and paintwork. Please note, I have kept exposure levels fairly low. If you edge towards overexposure, it tends to burn out detail, which is where all those micro scratches and that hide and you wouldn't be able to see them so if i keep the exposure low it highlights scratches and marks i've done that on purpose i am of course going to be back on friday so until then please ride safely and i'll see you soon